Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. Chief of the Space Patrol and his cadet Happy are on a training flight some 400 million miles from Terra, the man-made planet in space. Their high-speed maneuvers have carried them near the planet Jupiter. Meanwhile, Carol, the Secretary General's daughter, and her companion Tonga, assistant to the Security Chief of the United Planets, having spent a few days at the Red Lake Winter Resort on Jupiter, are about to board their spaceship for Terra. So stand by for tonight's exciting Space Patrol adventure, immediately following this important announcement. A great name comes to television when the Pulitzer Prize Playhouse raises its telecurtain weekly on this channel. The American Broadcasting Company proudly presents these thrilling dramatizations of prize-winning talents, hailed by the press as the finest video shows ever produced. The Pulitzer name is honored everywhere as a pioneer in maintaining superb standards in all phases of journalistic and artistic entertainment. Now these talents come to life on the Pulitzer Prize Playhouse weekly on your local American Broadcasting Company television station. It's first class theater entertainment right in your own living room. You'll see the creations of the world's greatest playwrights brought to life by your favorite actors of the stage and screen. Pulitzer Prize Playhouse has already brought you the brilliant performances of Helen Hayes, Judith Anderson, Albert Decca, and Florence Reed. And there are many more in store for you every week on this channel. Remember, when it's a Pulitzer play, it's a great play. Now for tonight's exciting Space Patrol adventure. wind was going to blow us right off the planet Jupiter. I'll say. You wish you'd have started for Terra sooner. Oh, don't well, worry. The sun starts to go down. It really gets cold in a hurry. Well, we'll be off the ground before Red Lake has time to freeze over. I'm glad to be aboard where it's warm. Yes. Say, look at those hills. Oh, gosh, that temperature's falling fast. I've never seen it get so cold so fast. Well, that's Jupiter, Tonga. In a few minutes, Red Lake will be freezing over just the way it does every night. Hard to get used to these short days and nights here in Jupiter. Yes, after a 24-hour day on Terra, it is hard to adjust to a 10-hour day. If we were better adjusted, we would have started earlier, you know. Oh, I wish we had watched the time. At least we could have had the ship serviced. Oh, don't worry about this ship, Tonga. We've got plenty of fuel and enough oxygen to get us to Terra. All right, then. Let's get going. Are you going to fly it, Carol, or shall I? Oh, you flew all the way here, so I'll do the work going back. All right, pilot. If you have any trouble, just call in the co-pilot. Oh, who are you kidding? I'm a better pilot than you are any day. Oh, you are, are you? Well, let's see you prove it then before we get frozen in. All right, Happy. Fire rockets and pull her up. Right, sir. Chopper, happy. Like this, sir? Good. Now level off. Right, sir. Okay, put it on automatic pilot. Right. Let's go back to the nav compartment and check your astrogation, huh? Yes, sir. Do you know, Commander, this? This has been about the best training flight we've had so far. Oh, I will say you're improving a little. Just a little, sir? Just getting happy. You flew that spaceship like an old-timer today. I did, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. The fact that this good Commander work Corey from Carroll. Commander Corey from Carroll. I thought I'd be hearing from her. Oh, now I know why my training flight just happened to take place near Jupiter. You knew that Carol... Uh, did, uh, Sorry. If you must know, we finished a training flight. We're meeting Major Robertson on Jupiter. He's there now inspecting Unit 93, and it's strictly business. Oh, sure. Commander Corey from Carroll, will you please answer? 
This is Commander, Corey, and why so formal? Well, that is your title, isn't it, Commander? I've never known you to use it. Well, I'm feeling generous today. I have such a wonderful time here at Red Lake. Here at Red Lake? Haven't you left yet? We just lost it all. Flying down close to the lake now to get a close look. It's such, such a wonderful time. You're getting kind of late start, aren't you? It must be just about dark on Jupiter now. Well, we forgot to watch the time. We were having so much fun with... Well, what's that, Tonga? Some of the rockets are cutting out, Carol. Having trouble? Oh, I don't know. Probably nothing. Did I hear Tonga say some of the rockets were cutting out? Yes, but I don't think... Tonga, what's wrong? They're all quit. They just went out. I don't know why. Carol, hit your repeller right over the lake. Why are falling? Hit your repeller ray. Oh, we're so close to the water. We're going to cry! Carol, what happened? Carol! Smoking rockets, Commander. It sounded like their space phone went out. Carol, can you hear me? Please answer. What do you suppose happened, sir? I'm afraid they crashed right into Red Lake. Red Lake? They'll go clear to the bottom, sir. Gonna go help them, Happy. Well, how are we gonna find them? Red Lake is awful big. Jupiter Space Patrol Unit 93 from Commander Corey. Jupiter Space Patrol Unit 93 from Commander Corey. Jupiter Space Patrol Unit 93 headquarters. Go ahead, Commander. I want to speak to the United Planets Security Chief, Major Robertson. He's there inspecting Unit 93. I'll locate him for you at once, sir. Hurry. This is an emergency. Yes, sir. Emergency call for Major Robertson. Emergency call for Major Robertson. It's Major Robertson, go ahead. Bobby, this is Buzz. Oh, yeah, Commander, what's up? How soon can you get your hands on a deep sea locator? Right away, sir. Well, good. Blast off at once. Bring the locator with you. Fly along the Terra orbit over Red Lake. Red Lake? Yes. Carol and Tonga just crashed into it. They're probably in the bottom. Carol and Tonga? Now, listen, Robbie. The lake freezes over at sundown every day, but if we hurry, we may be able to get them out. I'm afraid you're too late, Commander. Red Lake's already frozen over. It won't thaw out for six hours on until the sun is up. We've got to get to them. We have no way of knowing whether anyone was hurt. The space phone cut out when they hit the water. Are you nearby, sir? Yeah, it's not far from Red Lake now. I'll meet you on the Terra orbit near the spaceport. Right, sir. I'll leave at once. Hurry, Robbie. Hurry out. Bottom of Red Lake. I know better. Carol, it's no more your fault than mine. Regardless of whose fault it is, it doesn't amount to the fact that we're still at the bottom of Red Lake. 
We might as well get used to the idea. Now, Tommy, don't talk like that. We're still alive. There's always a chance that somebody might... Wait a minute. What is it, Kim? Alice. I was talking to Buzz when the rockets cut out. I was still talking to him when we hit the water. Carol, you know something was wrong. Oh, of course. If I know Buzz, he's got it all figured out by now. Oh, he's probably in his way here right now to get us out of this. Sure, what are we worrying about? All he's got to do is line up. The ice. What's the matter, Carol? They could be frozen over by now, Tonga. Buzz can't get to us till it falls out in the morning. Look at the indicator. The oxygen. We, we don't have enough oxygen to last us that long. We'll be back for more adventure with Space Patrol in just one moment. But first, a special message. How far away is your future? It seems mighty close when you're worried about it, but when you're ready for it, it's a long ways away. You can get ready for your future today with United States Savings Bonds. For you're truly buying a future of security when you buy United States Savings Bonds. In just 10 years, you can get back $4 for every $3 you invest in savings bonds. That's a real dividend from a safe, sound investment. Why, even if your bonds are lost or destroyed, they will be replaced by your government. So save this very sensible, safe way. Join the part payment payroll savings plan where you work, or if you're self-employed, use the systematic bond a month plan at your bank. If you can't participate in a regular plan, buy an extra bond at any bank or post office now. That's the way to make your future dreams come true. Buy United States Savings Bonds now. And now, back to Space Patrol. Carol and Tonga, trapped under ice at the bottom of Jupiter's Great Red Lake, are frantically hoping they will be rescued before their limited oxygen supply runs out. Meanwhile, Buzz and Happy are racing to meet Robbie, who is on his way with equipment that may make the rescue possible. Well, here's a ship, sir. It must be Major Roberts. Oh, he didn't have far to go, Happy. I expected him to be here when we arrived. Idle rockets. Right, sir. Major Robertson from Commander Corey. Major Robertson from Commander Corey. Well, this is Robbie, sir. When do we start looking for that ship? Yeah, it should be pretty close to this area, Robbie, as near as I can guess. Uh, they must have flown pretty low over that lake, otherwise they could have used their repeller ray. Uh, that's exactly what happened. Uh, look, I'll turn on my locator and sweep back and forth over the area to see what I can find. We'll circle above you and maintain constant communications on the space of phone. All right, sir. You'll probably be able to hear the locator over your space of phone. I'll turn switch it on now. We can hear it all right. And if it speeds up, it'll mean we found them. Good luck, Robbie. Yeah, thank you, sir. Have you noticed it yet, girl? The yeah. air is getting stale. It's hard to breathe. There's a reason. The oxygen tanks are empty. Oh, Carol, what are we going to do? In a few minutes, I won't be in order. We can't breathe. We'll suffocate. They'll let us into a place. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. Get hold of yourself. 
You're doing fine, Robbie. That's it. Just sweep it back and forth. Yes, sir. Look at him go. Well, Robbie's one of the best pilots in the space patrol, Hap. I heard that, Commander. I hope you're right, especially right now. We're going to find them, Robbie. We've got to find them. Uh, nothing yet, sir. So here I go again. Commander! I hear it, Robbie. Uh, I'll make a repellery landing on the ice just a little way from the spot. It'll help us keep it located. Okay, we'll stand by up here until you've landed. Right, sir. Boy... I'm sure glad Major Robertson was able to locate Carol's ship, but, well, sir, how are we going to get through the ice? Just swing back, Happy, and relax. I got it. Sir? What? Commander, we're falling backwards. And I give you the signal, fire rockets with throttles on full. But that'll take us right back up in the air again, won't it, sir? That'll be quite a job, Happy. And we're going to come almost to crashing point before you fire those rockets. But I want the full force of the rockets to hit the ice. Well, that'll... That'll break the ice. I get it, sir. Right, I'm standing by, sir. All right, stand by. We're stand getting by. close. We're getting close. Not yet. Stand by. Now, sir. Now, fire rockets. It's melting the ice. We're going into the water. We're sinking. Commander Corey from Major Robertson. Commander Corey from Major Robertson. We made it, Robbie. We're on the bottom. A good, Commander. We're getting into our spacesuits now. Yeah, but, Commander, that uh, ice will freeze over in a matter of minutes. You'd better hurry, sir. We'll hurry as fast as we can. Stand by and keep us informed. All right, sir. Major Robertson out. Please. Can't last much longer. Hot. Hot. Be keep your face down close to deck. What air is left is down there. Oh, why, why does somebody come? It's about over. Only a couple of more minutes. Sure seems strange, sir. Using spacesuits for this. Sort of deep sea diving. They'll make good diving suits, Happy. They'll keep out the water and they carry oxygen so we can breathe. Well, gee, Commander. When we go out in space, we inflate them with pressure because there's no air pressure out there. But down here, there's lots of pressure. Right. Well, we'll go into the decompression chamber the same as usual, Hap. Only this time... We'll use the air escape valve to let the water in. Oh, I see, sir. We'll let the water come in a little at a time until the chamber is filled up and the pressure against us is gradually increased. That's right, Hap. If we stepped out of the ship and that water pressure hit us all at once, I'm afraid we'd get the bends. Gee, just like deep sea divers who rise to the surface too quickly. Yes, but if we let the pressure against our bodies increase gradually, we can withstand it all right. I'm all set, sir. Okay, Hap. Let's go.
Well, that's one thing in their favor anyway. I'll try the hatch, sir. It's locked. It won't open. It isn't locked, Happy. The outside water pressure holding it closed. Smoking rocket, sir. How will we get it open? Someone inside will have to open the air valve and let the water in the decompression chamber. It's the only way. But, sir, how are we going to get word to them? Their space phone is out of order. There's one chance, Happy. It might work. Follow me. Not knowing what's going on down there. That hole's freezing over, too. Uh, I wouldn't give a burnt out rocket tube for their chances now. return to Space Patrol in just one moment. But first, a message of importance. You know, a great many elements go into the making of a successful television program, and you'll find all these elements in Beulah, brought to you every week on your local American Broadcasting Company television station. First of all, Beulah stars one of the greatest all-around stars of all time. Miss Ethel Waters, who has been a top star of radio, stage, vaudeville, motion pictures, musical comedy, and now television. And you'll laugh yourself silly at the antics of this great lady of entertainment as she cavorts across your TV screen. Ain't nobody has no troubles when Beulah's around. Yes, you'll see radio's great successful comedy, Beulah, on television, when you tune to Ethel Waters on this channel weekly. Don't miss this exciting theatrical experience. You'll be better entertained when you see Beulah. And now, back to Space Patrol. Hey. 
Commander, this is Robbie. Hi, Robbie. You can quit worrying now. We got the girls aboard my ship and they're going to be all right. Yeah, but things don't look so good up here. What do you mean? That hole you made in the ice is frozen solid. Well, and we'll just have to open it up again. But how, sir? With a pointed nose of this endurium hull, Robbie. We're this close to success. We're not stopping now just for a hunk of ice. Staying clear. Okay, Happy, I'll take her this time. Yes, sir. Fire rockets. Fire rockets. Hold. Hang on. Here we go. Boy, am I glad that's over. Let's get after Right, sir. Oh, no, Buck. I didn't think you could do it. I'm awfully glad you did. I was getting tired of that place. As a matter of fact, right now, I don't care much for Jupiter. <laughs> Me either. They can have their short days. Well, anyway, we're on our way home now. You know, Commander, I, I kind of agree with Carol. You know, I'm glad that Terra's got a 24-hour day instead of only 10. As a matter of fact, would you like such short days? Oh, it wouldn't be the short days that would bother me, Commander. No, what then? Well, it'd be the short nights. You wouldn't have any time to sleep. <laughs> oh, 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 no. Once again, Buzz Corey's quick thinking and daring have prevented a dangerous situation from turning into disaster. However, events now taking place along the space lanes are going to mean more thrills and some exciting action in space for Buzz Corey and his cadet happy. So be sure to be with us next week and every week when ABC brings you thrills and excitement with Space Patrol! ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.